Friends, welcome back to Drawing Conversation, where I am your dedicated nerd host and artist, Danny Fisher. And today, well, today we're drawing the origin and history of the Ghost Rider. Let's go. So before we get started, I just want to thank you again for coming back and watching these videos. I genuinely appreciate your support. So today, well, today, it's all about Ghost Rider. And growing up, I loved the Ghost Rider. I mean, the bike, the flaming head, the chains, spikes. I mean, guys, for an anti-hero, it doesn't get any cooler. So originally, he was written to be a villain. But Ghost Rider has become one of the greatest anti-heroes in Marvel. But what we need to know about the Ghost Rider is that Ghost Rider is a moniker. It's an identity that's been passed down from host to to host. And literally anyone can be a ghost rider. You just have to be willing to, you know, make a deal with the devil. Not much. Well, now I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's, let's back up just a little bit. Today, I wanted to focus on the host Johnny Blaze ghost rider, because this was the first ghost rider that I was exposed to. And technically he's the second ghost rider. But to be completely honest, the first ghost rider was just a cowboy and all dressed in white on a white horse. And the character really never took off at least not the way Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider did. So Johnny was born to father Barton Blaze and mother Naomi Kale. Both parents are accomplished stunt motorcyclists that traveled with the Quentin Carnival. And at a very young age, Johnny's mother, Naomi, leaves his father, Barton, and Johnny. But for whatever reason, takes his other siblings, Barbara and Danny, I, I don't know. Not long after this, Johnny's father, Barton, dies in a stunt gone horribly wrong. Yeah, things are all just sunshine and rainbows for Johnny, right? Well, not all bad. Johnny is soon adopted by Crash and Mona Simpson. Now, they're, <laughs> you guessed it, they just happen to be a cycling duo family as well. And they have a younger daughter, about Johnny's age, named Roxanne. Now, these two are inseparable, and as weird as it sounds, as they get older, they start dating. Yeah, just weird. Well, as you can imagine, Johnny loves his new family and is a welcomed member. And things are great until his stepmother dies in an accident. Yeah, kind of a pattern here. But before she dies, she makes Johnny promise to her in secret that he will never perform stunts. And so, at the cost of looking like a coward in front of his family and the carnival, he keeps his promise, but still ends up practicing in private. And life goes on for Johnny. But tragedy strikes again when Crash, Johnny's stepfather, is diagnosed with cancer. Well, we come to learn that Johnny was not only practicing the motorcycle in secret, he was also practicing the occult. I'm talking about pentagrams, black magic, all the like. Well, he turns to this, has a secret seance, and summons what he thinks is the devil. All right, so the devil turns out to be a super powerful demon named Mephisto. And oh my God, I love Mephisto. So just to put him in context, Mephisto is the king of deals and mischief. I mean, he makes Loki look like a child. Mephisto is one of the oldest beings in the Marvel Universe. And it's not so much that he's incredibly powerful or that he can give powers, but rather, again, his power is all about making deals, demonic pacts, and contracts. Mephisto promises to cure his stepfather's cancer if Mephisto can have Johnny's soul. So the deal is, Johnny gives up his immortal soul, and Mephisto will then put the spirit of an almost equally powerful demon named Zarathos into Johnny's body and would then be forced to go out and do Mephisto's bidding. Now, because I don't really have the time to deep dive into Zarathos, all that you have to know is that he's an insanely powerful and ancient demon. And just like that, Johnny sold his soul. Well, just before the pact could be completed and Johnny's soul taken forever, Roxanne, Johnny's stepsister, girlfriend, weird thing, anyway, she interrupts the ritual by proclaiming her love for Johnny and casting Mephisto away allowing Johnny to keep his soul. Well, as promised, Mephisto cures Crash's cancer, 
and he makes a full and miraculous recovery. And to celebrate, Crash announces he'll perform the most amazing and death-defying stunt of all time. He's going to jump 22 cars in a row. And I'm sure as you guessed it, Crash, well, crashes and dies from his injuries. Deals with the devil, they just never work out. So now we have Johnny with a quasi-bonded Zarathos demon inside of him and constantly fighting the evil manipulation of Mephisto, who keeps popping up to ruin Johnny's day like that rash from Vegas. Life for Johnny absolutely stinks. And he goes out and, well, he, I mean, he tries to have a normal life. And sometimes he's in charge and sometimes the demons inside of him take full control. I mean, it's tough to have a nine to five if at any minute Mephisto shows up to make you go do dirty work. Even worse than that, if Johnny finds himself in the presence of evil, like demons or people possessed by demons, he just bursts into flames and has to banish them to hell. I wish I had that ability. It would have kept me out of some real toxic relationships. Anyhow, this is Johnny's life. Trying to live a normal life, wrestling with the demons inside of him, and that's what makes reading Ghost Rider so much fun. But anyhow, let's talk about what Ghost Rider is capable of doing. Oh, and do keep in mind that there have literally been hundreds of Ghost Riders over the years, and their powers kind of shift just a little bit from host to host. But some of the base power sets are typically similar. Well, for starters, he's insanely strong being able to press upwards of 25 tons and is virtually indestructible. I mean, bullets either pass right through him or bounce off of his bones. He is immortal and can regenerate from virtually any damage. Say for example, like, I don't know, a demonic weapon and possesses the ability to fly at over three times the speed of light. And now the coolest part, the flames. Well, they aren't standard flames. Rather, they're pure hellfire flames that burn the spirit and not the physical world. But don't get me wrong, he can do that too. You know, when he feels like it. And whatever the Ghost Rider rides, it turns into a kind of a flaming chariot. And in most cases, it's a motorcycle. But Marvel has shown us that the Ghost Rider has ridden everything from flaming horses, cars, boats, woolly mammoths, even sharks and rhinos. Yeah, so basically anything a human could ride. But what's more is that if there's no vehicle or mount around, the Ghost Rider can summon a ride, whatever it may be, right out of thin air. The Ghost Rider also possesses demonic chains as his primary weapon. Now, these chains are really controlled by his mind and can completely shapeshift, like stretching to unreal lengths to catch his target or change shape entirely to form each link into a kind of throwing star or flaming projectile. The Ghost Rider also has the ability to travel between dimensions and realms. To put it in perspective, he could jump from Earth to Asgard to the Crimson Dimension and the Dark Dimension and then back again as much as he pleases. He has also shown a high proficiency in hand-to-hand -hand combat but doesn't hesitate to use shotguns or really anything that's handy at the time. And lastly, my favorite ability of the Ghost Rider is the Penance Stare. This is a type of ethereal flame that the Ghost Rider projects at his victims. The Penance Stare forces the target to see, feel, and relive all the pain and suffering they've ever caused to another living being. Only it's magnified. They feel everything their victims ever felt. The Penance Stare typically leaves his enemies in kind of a catatonic state for a time, but based on how bad their crimes were, it can sometimes be a permanent thing. This stare is so powerful, it's even forced cosmic beings like Galactus to turn away from the Earth. Think about that, Galactus. Hey, kind of a fun fact, in an alternate future, Ghost Rider uses the Penance Stare on Thanos, and Thanos actually enjoys it so much, he forces Ghost Rider to use the stare on him regularly. Yes, Thanos truly earns the nickname, the Mad Titan. Ah, uh, I've gotta do an episode on Thanos one day. Now, over the publication history, 
Johnny Blaze has lost and gained the powers of Ghost Rider and has fought and teamed up with just about everyone in the Marvel Universe. Ghost Rider has gone on to be produced in virtually all forms of media. And despite his appearance, he has been a force of good throughout his history. And this is why I love reading Ghost Rider. So friends, thank you again for watching. As always, it is your support that truly helps to drive this channel. So if you would, scroll on down to the comment section and let me know what kind of characters or fandom you want to see drawn. And I will talk to you again soon.